Oh hi, I didn't see you there. I hope you're social distancing. I just wanted to let you know that today's show is brought to you by extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon. Andrew, tell us a little bit about Patreon and who's donating. Do donate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're going to figure out how to talk tonight, Jess. I will. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> um, Patreon is where you can go if you want to get extra commentaries from us and some after parties and things like that. Uh, and if you want to just support us by donating, it's excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, our current donors, we have a very large list of. Here we go. Stephanie L., Terry Needleman, Max Lunig, Benjamin Lear, Lily Ackles, Mackenzie Horner, John Don, A Terran the Duck, Just Lightning, Ewan Cassidy, Haley McDonald, Taskier, Fire of September, uh, Mina Maniri, Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Haley Murray, that's halfway, Alice in Wonderland, B-Way Flicks, with Daniel Stacy Coombe, Joseph Evans Green, Luna Rocks 222, um... Irigail Drouet Whiter, uh, that one's still hard for me, sorry. Carrie Ahern, uh, Christine Malmadel, uh, Ben Packard, Mezzanine Theater Diary, Mary Lou Choquette, Anne Nunnally, Cole Birchfield, Sam Caulfield, John Vanels, and Holy Stick. Reality. I think they did that just to make you mad. Um, but these folks give us a little extra financial support <laughs> that helps us keep the lights on here at Musicals with Cheese. If you'd like to join them in supporting us to get tons of fun perks, such as patron-only commentaries, or episodes a day earlier, or even earlier, come join us over at Patreon. All right, I don't think there's anything else we got to show right now. They, they know the rest of it, so let's just get on to the show. We're going to get on to it. Hello, I'm Jesse McAnally. And I'm Andrew DeWolf. And welcome to Musicals with Cheese, a podcast where I try to get Andrew to like musical theater. And today we have a super special guest that I'm like very special so guest. excited about. Like I, I'm actually legitimately like a little bit fangirling inside. Oh um, today I have with <laughs> us um, Isabel from. <laughs> Let's see, I just I messed it all up. Be kind, rewind. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. This is great. Wonderful, wonderful. And I'm just gonna let you introduce what we're talking about today. We're just gonna dive into it. Great. So um, you guys asked me what musical I wanted to talk about. And um, I said my favorite bad musical is The Bridges of Madison County, which is based on, I guess, some combination of the 90s movie starring um, Meryl Streep and Clint Eastwood and also the book by I don't remember the author. I apologize. Robert, Robert James, James Waller, Waller, I'm seeing. Um and it did not do very well on Broadway, but it yielded an amazing score by Jason Robert Brown. Um, and it's basically about this Italian woman who um, finds herself as an immigrant living in Iowa. And, uh, you know, one one day while her family is gone, she meets this gorgeous National Geographic <laughs> photographer and um, they have a whirlwind love affair over a weekend. Um, and they end up separating, but, you know, think about each other for the rest of their lives. And, so um, yeah, it's just a crazy story and musical. Um, and I'm so excited to talk about it. Holding you close against my skin and pulling you inside me. Suddenly there's a world I never knew. Kissing you now, the waves begin and evermore divide me. Before and after you, you with a touch at once erased the lines and walls around me. How did you know exactly? I know my fate has found me. All right, so I'm going to dive into like a little bit of background just behind the show, and I'm so happy that you kind of gave us that context, and I can't wait to talk to you about the comparisons to the film, because there's a ton I have to say about that. But The Bridges of Madison County is a musical based on Robert James Waller's 1992 novel, with a book by Marsha Norman, who you might know from The Color Purple musical, and she's super talented, and... Sadly, I feel like her work isn't really shining here as much as it did in The Color Purple. And as much as music and lyrics by president of the Jason Robert Brown fan club, Jason Robert Brown. 
Um, the musical premiered on Broadway at the Gerald Schoenfeld Theater. Schoenfeld, Schoenfeld Theater. God, <laughs> I got, I gotta work on this. I gotta stop slurring my words. It premiered on February twentieth, twenty fourteen, and closed on May eighteenth, twenty fourteen. The, the original Broadway production was directed by Bartlett Schur and starred Kelly O'Hara as Francesca and Stephen Pasquale as Robert Brown's... Oh, shoot. As Robert. <laughs> Not Robert wait, Brown. Is that, wait, wait, wait. Hold on Not Robert second. Brown. <laughs> is that, could it be interpreted as a self-insert then? <laughs> Literally, it has his middle name. Well, it's the author's... The author of the book's first name. Oh, oh my gosh. We got Robert <laughs> on Robert on Robert here. It's definitely a self insert. This is Robert James Wallers. He's just he's like, yeah, I'm I'm awesome. Girls love me. Uh, <laughs> but I believe the only Tony Award this one was for best original score and best orchestrations, both going to Jason Robert Brown, and neither were aired during the original Tony's broadcast. I remember that specifically that they played that during the commercials, which is strange because usually they that's the big one that they try to showcase on the Tony Award show. I'm sure someone with a little bit more Tony's history would be able to explain that to me one day. But <laughs> I'm genuinely curious. Uh, I'm going to start with Andrew just because he is the one that has no context for this whatsoever. I Andrew, haven't seen what, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> what is your general thoughts on just the musical? I mean, honestly, the music is very good, but the story is kind of lame. <laughs> Uh, I guess that's a very blunt way to put it, but I mean, there was a lot of songs that I'm like, wow, this could be really good and in, in a better story. <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking, Isabel? Like, I know you have a good history with the movie. At least I imagine you do. Yeah. You know, I haven't watched it recently, but um, I think the musical for me just hits this very specific part of my soul that like needs to hear a really good soprano go off. Um and I know just like having read about the musical before that this was specifically written for Kelly O'Hara, like J she and Jason Robert Brown spent a lot of time together, like really matching the score to her voice. Um, and I think you can tell. And so I just I remember being in the audience of this musical, just feeling like this wave of sound was just like taking over my body. <laughs> um, and so I think uh I don't know. It just really blew me away in that way specifically. And there are so yeah. many other problems with this musical, but like, um, <laughs> but that's why it's sort of held up to me as one of my favorites. It's got some like strange, like subplot stuff going on with like the family and, and this and her neighbor and it just doesn't fit. <laughs> but I think the main part of it and the music really works well, but the rest um, does not. <laughs> I honestly think like this, there's a really good one act musical in here. You just need to trim out a bunch of it. And because <laughs> <laughs> honestly, like the music is good and it's got enough content to fit in like 90 minutes, not right. in like three hours. Totally. I feel like because I sort of skimmed through the bootleg version to kind of remind myself of it. And that is exactly what I was thinking is just there's so much extra stuff in it when you really just care about seeing like this man and this woman isolated together because that's what this weekend is like they're isolated. That's the whole story. Yeah. yeah and they're like <laughs> basically just exploring each other and like learning about each other's past. So you don't need all of this like extra. What are the kids doing? Like what are the neighbors doing? Like we don't care. Like, <laughs> talk about them. But I don't really need to see them. And like to, all like, the neighbors do is talk important. about what they're doing anyways. It's like, like, what, what does this even matter? Yeah. Well, I feel like they just stripped out any sense of self-awareness from the couple and like any, cause in the film, like Meryl Streep and Clint Eastwood, like they're goofy weirdos basically. And there's not, there's a ton of comedy to be had from that, but they remove that and keep this as a romance to defeat all romances in the musical. So they're like, well, we need to get some chuckles in here. Throw the neighbors out there. Like, <laughs> and Put the neighbors out there. Yeah. They'll make them laugh. Yeah. And I also just felt like the um, the set design was really strange and just like the direction. It's so weird because Bartlett Shear has worked with um, Kelly O'Hara so many times and he's gotten some of her best work out of her. And it's so strange to me that he would like throw her on a stage where there's like so much stuff happening in the background. Like just let her like sh tell you the lyrics, let her tell you the story. You don't need to like see the bridge coming on like that you know what i mean it's just so distracting when the lyrics are so good and tell you everything you need to know 
it just screams that the director didn't have the confidence that the uh, Jason Robert Brown and Marsha both did, mm. like in the actual content. Yeah, and it's funny because there's a um, performance that Kelly O'Hara did for the New York Times, like around Tony season, um, and she does the opening song a cappella. And what's it's literally a different song when she does it like that. And because she has this space to kind of find words and like interpretations of it that have nothing to do with what's happening on stage or like how the orchestration is. So she'll like say like, oh, I learned new words and I like changed my name. And she finds like that's an immigrant experience that's just like totally erased in how they show it on stage. And home is and home is fair the porch the bath the kitchen the chair the sharp and unfamiliar air that blow by blow she comes to know to build herself a home with a son and a daughter Um, but she like gives it this importance in the way that she delivers it. And I was, it's just so disappointing to think like she could have just done that on stage and have it been simple and she couldn't. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of the joy of her performance in the light in the piazza where they just kind of have very minimalist designs that are very specific mm-hmm. and just let the actors perform it. Mm-hmm. And that is vi- not here at all. <laughs> yeah. So true. So there was a forbidden Broadway um recording around the same time that this was hitting broadway and a lot of quotes from it specifically stick out to me which is it's only adultery if it's uh, adultery is for ugly people when you're beautiful it's a a love lasting beyond the years and all that Mm -hmm. um but the thing is like i think back to the original film where it's clint eastwood and meryl streep and they're both kind of past their prime in the context of the film um especially clint eastwood (laughs) Mm-hmm. who uh, yeah. we we're supposed to see as like this beautiful romantic le- lead and i'm like that, that's clint eastwood <laughs> yeah he's directing himself that's a good thing to remind um yourself of in this moment <laughs> he's framing himself and i i i made a discovery when re-watching that film is i don't think clint eastwood was ever that great an actor i think we were just so b- amazed by the good the bad and the ugly that we f- were like oh yeah he's a good actor right yeah it's a really weird role for him i would say because, like, he's not usually seen as, like, a romantic lead. Doesn't he play, like, tough guys? Or? I don't know the history of that film specifically or, like, why he chose to direct it, but... I think he could have directed it well with anyone else in that leading role, honestly. I feel like that film is only brought down by him in that role with that performance. Mm-hmm. Which is another thing that I feel that this this story takes on. But as you said before... You feel the isolation of these two people in the film, and this one we constantly cut back to the father and the two kids. We cut back to the neighbors. We cut all all around, and it's it it is effective in their individual scenes. And as an album, I think it is very effective. But in the show, I don't think so at all. Yeah, like I think the kids should have called once. <laughs> like they should have called once right before she has to make the decision about whether she's going to leave or not. Mm-hmm. That would have been plenty. Yeah. Because they they give these like subplots to the kids and like none of it works. It's like, who cares? She doesn't want to be, a, she does want to be a farmer or she doesn't. I don't even remember. One of them does and one of them doesn't. I don't. And they both don't and then one of they them does by the end. But then one of them does. It's like, it, I don't care. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. That felt but like I a like book writer the... decision where we, we need an ensemble, but we also want them to have juicy roles so we can get decent people in there exactly yeah i really like those actors though who play the kids like i've seen Mm -hmm. them in other stuff i think it's really funny though that they were like oh Derek klenna is 16 (laughs) he looks literally 35 (laughs) i don't know what it is with Derek klenna and musicals but anytime they put him in the music in a musical they make him the most hateable character and now i can't separate (laughs) him from the characters anymore yeah 
I remember one time I was on the subway and I was like really going off about bridges because I loved it like so much. And then he literally stepped in the car and I was just like, I'm going to stop talking. (laughs) Like told my friend, I was like, I just will stop talking for now and we'll continue this later. New York is a different world where that can just happen. (laughs) I've never met anyone famous. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. hey you're meeting isabel right now oh god don't count that that doesn't count <laughs> is that fame is this fame this is fame you've made it this We've is what it's like it. yeah this is what it's like um <laughs> <laughs> the movie if you recall has a framing device that is not effective at all in the film and once again just as useless where it starts in the present day so to say or at least a few years later where you have the older kids reading the letters finding out about her mom, their mom cheating on their dad with Clint Eastwood, and they're like, what are we gonna do? And we cut back to them every now and then. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't do that in this. That would've just made it even worse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And they were specifically adapting the novel, but taking elements that kind of like from the film with this musical. Yeah, I think so. I don't... I remember I read the book after the musical just to see what it was like, and I literally don't remember it at all. It was like 50 pages. It's so short. Oh, wow. It's a short story. Short, short story. I mean, not literally 50 pages. But it's, <laughs> it's quite short. Like, you could do it in a day. For sure. This this is the first Jason Robert Brown musical that doesn't quite feel like a, mu- a Jason Robert Brown musical. There's, like, no long piano solos. He's stri- mostly using, like, strings and guitars, which is not usual for him as mm-hmm. well. And he has spoken at length about like composing for a guitar just because he wanted to see if he could do it and like seeing how that would all work and i I, yeah it's actually and i'm just thinking about this now and it's such an interesting mix because like he kind of uses those the strings in both like a country way but then in like a folk manner but then he also mm -hmm. throws in some like baroque kind of trills every once in a while which is like an italian kind of sounding and like with the cello and stuff that's a really interesting mix i never thought of that now here's a question that's been kind of jostling around in my mind since i first watched the bootleg like a horrible heathen i am um the nude scene it does it is the most pointless nude scene since the opening of passion in my opinion like why is this here i don't even remember it what is this in the movie? No, it's in the musical. Kelly O'Hara gets out butt ass naked from a bathtub and then just puts like like audience get a fair look. All right, then I'm going to put a towel on. I'm like, <laughs> why is this here? That's oh so goodness. funny. Yeah, I barely remember that. And I'm like, well, it just feels like sex appeal for the sake of sex appeal. And she mm-hmm. even wrote it like did interviews about like being super uncomfortable with it and being like, yeah, I had just had a kid and I'm in mother territory and I'm not seen as seeing myself as like a sexual being right now and having to be asked to do this was really uncomfortable and i really pushed back about against it but here we are mm. and Ugh, that's any, weird and i'm just like that who was fighting you on this to be like oh no we need this for this scene where robert's singing in a different room and you just get out of the tub naked probably the director <sighs> But I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, what? What is it? An artistic reason? I'm failing to see it. Like, in any way, as being artistic. And I'm real. Like, in Spring Awakening, the nudity almost feels necessary because of the context of that show. Whereas this is not a sexual or an objectification show. Well, I think it is a sexual show. I mean, I I think it'd be interesting to do a closer reading of like how she's dressed around the kids and how she dresses around Robert. Like. Mm-hmm. If she wears, you know, dresses that really cover her up or like make her look very maternal. And then in this moment where she's with Robert for the first time or like, you know, like fully into this affair where she's sort of stripped down and like her elemental self, you know, I could see I could see an argument that way. But like, I totally see where you're coming from. I could see I could see that. But once again, she's not with Robert. She's on her own in a bathtub. He's singing (laughs) off stage. Mm -hmm. There is no interaction between the two. And it's it's not even like the scene in the Clint Eastwood movie where Meryl Streep looks at herself in the mirror, opens up her robe and is like, oh, yeah, I am still a woman with femininity and all that. It wasn't even that moment, which I thought, oh, that would be effective. Yeah, that's a much better way to do that. And it just it's part of theater where a lot of people say, like, there's no holds bars. You can do whatever you want. But also, does that mean you should? Yeah, you really don't have to do whatever you want. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. she did. I'm pretty sure she did full frontal in um, 
Dracula, didn't she? Oh, or not? Maybe it wasn't Dracula. Maybe it was um it was something else. Was she, was she in Dracula? I think so. Oh my god! It was either what? Dracula or like Jekyll and Hyde or something. It wasn't remember. Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> oh, nothing is worth getting naked for in Jekyll and Hyde. Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe, um, maybe she wasn't. She wasn't ja- Dracula. Oh my god! Yeah, yuck! What? what why? <laughs> yeah. Is Dracula a uh, a good one, Jess? It's Frank Wildhorn. So what do you think? No, no, probably not. <laughs> it's B minus um, Andrew Lloyd Webber, and Andrew Lloyd Webber <laughs> is C minus everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> so put those pieces together yourselves. Um, but the storytelling wise. Like, how do you think the story is told? Well, because this is more or less a character piece, how do you feel like they express these characters through song or through stagecraft? Is it effective? Hmm. I, um, I feel like most of the things that I find effective, I have to work to, to like feel that way. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, a lot of it is just listening to the lyrics and having to feel those more than you, uh, are taking in what you're seeing on the stage. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just found myself kind of wanting it to be more pared down and more minimalistic throughout the show, just to make it a little more, I think that would make it a more serious character study and kind of like a traditional Hollywood or not Hollywood, um, Broadway kind of way. I don't know if that makes sense. And why would you think that this flop so bad? Because this is like a notorious flop. Not quite carry the musical bad, but pretty bad. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I think I saw it the week that it closed. Like we rushed it. I don't quite see how this would flop so poorly. I mean, we've watched much worse stuff on the show, Jess. (laughs) I know we have. (laughs) Cats Cats is a recent one. Well, I mean, Cats did flop like the movie. But like, you know, you got like Jekyll and Hyde, which wasn't a flop. And that this is better than that, in my opinion. Well, it's a opinion. different category, like, and Broadway has changed a lot since the 90s, too. That's true. I think it's just a really weird, like, middle ground thing to adapt. Because, like, Broadway's doing a lot of this stuff right now, right? Like, you know, they want to make Beetlejuice or Pretty Woman or Mean Girls into a musical because it has a built-in audience and, like, a certain level of name recognition. So a lot of, like, tourists will come to see it. And, like, yeah. The, but the bridges of Madison County, while it is kind of known, doesn't have the same kind of fan base or like name recognition even to the point that it would make it would have like an automatic audience. Like it's just kind yeah. of like people kind of know what it is, but it's not big enough or like flashy or funny enough to kind of count as like being in that category. So it's just like it's a very weird choice to me. Mm-hmm. Well, all of Jason Robert Brown's choices around this time are weird. Honeymoon in Vegas, and then he was doing the King Kong musical for a period till they kicked him off, and then he was doing <laughs> a musical version of A Leave Their Own, which he just said, okay, I'm done, I'm done here. Like, he was big on reviving 90s movies into yeah, musicals. super and weird. Hoping it would work. So I went to, there was this, like, weird piano bar in New York where, um... He had like a residency, so he was doing Mm -hmm. like a performance every week or whatever. And so I went to see him uh, play a bunch of songs from his musicals. And people were like, "Uh," you know, the crowd was like justice for bridges and whatever. (laughs) Um, And he was like, he was like, well, I did my part. And then he just starts playing another song. And I was like, oh, my God. (laughs) I I feel like like he still loves this. Like even on the broad or on the tour of America, he was still conducting it. Like he has a big ego, but he sticks out through the shit, like so to say. Yeah. And I think I mean Kelly O'Hara talks about this role like that too. Like she knows that it flopped, but it still holds this special place for her, I think, just because of how specifically the role was written maybe i think all the solo songs for francesca are are very good so i mean there's definitely stuff to be proud of in this if you did write it and i don't think it deserved to flop (laughs) i mean the thing is i don't imagine paying broadway money for what this turned out to be with this creative team with that book writer with this length and all that i think i suppose he needs to go and do what he did with the parade um a few years ago at the donmar playhouse where he just took the book took everything and 
ripped it apart and made it like the most perfect version of itself. And I feel like once Jason Robert Brown and Marsha, what was her last name? I'm such a terrible podcaster. Uh, <laughs> uh, Marsha Norman um, were to go and really take a look without the directors involved, without any of these other people and just do that pared down version that's shorter cut out the family subplots, I think we have a really, really good two-hander, much in the same way of the last five years. Hello, welcome to the mid-show interruption, where we mm -hmm. chill at you a second time, because we didn't do it enough. Never uh, enough. Jess, would you like to tell us about Patreon? Patreon's great, we got a bunch of commentaries, <laughs> we just posted one on Moulin Rouge, we'll probably do more, we're in a quarantine, what are we gonna do with our lives? So, our current <laughs> patrons are Stephanie L., Terry Needleman, Max Lunig, Benjamin Lair, Lily Ackles, yeah. Mackenzie Horner, John Donna, Taryn the Duck, L Jess Lightning, Ewan Cassidy, Haley McDowell, Taskier, Fiverr September, Mina Maniri, Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Haley Murray, Allison 101, B-Way Flicks, Nathaniel Stacey Coombe, Joseph Evans Green, Luna Rocks 222, Eregal, Drew A. Whiter, Carrie Ahern, Christine Malmadel, Ben Packard, Mezzanine Theater Diary, Mary Lou Choquette, and Nunnally, Cole Birchfeld, Sam Caulfield, John <laughs> Vinyls. You get to the new names, and it just slows down. <laughs> <laughs> but these all give us, these folks all give us an extra bit of financial support that helps us keep the lights on here at Musicals with Cheese. If you would like to join them in supporting us and get tons of fun perks, such as patron-only commentaries, our episodes a day early, or even earlier, come join us over at Patreon. Let's start with To Build a Home. I'm going to let you start this one up, Isabel. I want to hear all about how that was performed a cappella. Please tell me more. Oh, yeah. Well, um, so it wasn't for the show. It was just, I, yeah, I think it's literally just part of Tony's campaigning. It was like um, an advertisement or, or like a, something like that? I think that. they the New York Times just had all of the like Tony nominees come to like perform at their office or something i don't know um it's like a boardroom and they're just all lined up to, to yeah <laughs> um no it, but it it's just like a very lovely song like any way you perform it um yeah so you guys saw the way it was performed like in the musical is kind of not chaotic but it's busy um it's overblown very mm -hmm. overblown I mean, they're literally like building a home like they're, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff yeah. going on behind and there's right. extra characters just coming in and everywhere. There's a fridge it's, it's suddenly, a, you know, there's appliances. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's being built. <laughs> but I think like the the actual lyrics of the song are better than that. <laughs> like it, it really felt like um, talking about what it means to leave what you thought was your home and try to make your life feel normal and um i don't know just like put together how do you put together a new life somewhere and so like for me i didn't really need the metaphor of like literally building a home like <laughs> just let her it talk almost, it almost just distracts from the lyrical content too because you're paying right. attention to all this other stuff happening you're not really listening Mm -hmm. Right. But also in the direction is like they're making her go through and like pick up the laundry and like hug the kid. And it's just like that sort of works. But I just wish it were about her in this moment and not like her world. Right. And because we get her world a good amount during Home Before You Know, which follows directly afterward, where it feels like a hat on a hat where we kind of just need to be in Francesca's head a bit. Mm hmm. 
Totally. And we're, I don't really want to dive into Home Before You Know It, but it feels it feels kind of out of place in this story. <laughs> yeah, totally could cut it. And I would not know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> I like the parts where Francesca's like, yeah, I want y'all out and having a nice little coda of like her themes and all that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, before we move on from To Build a Home, Jason Robert Brown um, did an entire like lecture series about like how he writes songs and how it reflects character sometimes um, content dictates form and all that. Um, but he says like she's waltzing around her melody in this song where she's never quite on track with it. And then she finally gets like disrupted when Robert comes in and then she figures out where she belongs and then she goes right back to it at the end. Um, and somehow it all works together, despite the fact that I kind of hear it where the the actual orchestrations aren't following her as much as she's kind of dancing around the orchestrations with her vocals. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, and that's why I think the acapella version is so good, because you just <laughs> erase all of that. It's just the vocals and there's none of that. <laughs> yeah, because yes. like, you know, there's I literally I have listened to that one version so often that I forgot there was the, that whole section where it's like just her neighbors being like, ah, like, <laughs> you don't need that at all. Well, I mean, you got to throw the neighbors in there. It's everybody's favorite character. Of course. <laughs> the neighbor. Yeah. I mean, they are the only ones that get chuckles in this, so might as well throw them in there in the opening, let them get some screen time. Sure. How you else will could, we know? You could cut the neighbors from the entire thing, and I don't think it would matter. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. It Not in not one bit. Except for the overall sound that Jason Robert Brown was looking for. Right. Which, if you're writing just because you want an ensemble, I don't... I don't think that's what you should be doing. Like falling into you is like the big one of this one. It's the one they use for all mm -hmm. like the advertising. And it's probably my least favorite duet between Francesca and uh, Robert. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the, just going to uh, throw that opinion out there and see what everyone else says. Is that the act one closer? Yeah, basically. When they finally be like, we're, we're officially banging. Let's do this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like they banged before that, but maybe I was just reading into it too much. I mean, they just thought about it. There was sexual tension way before then. I think they probably should have had sexual tension. Like he's like, I, I would have left, you know, if if you had, I gave you the out, and I'm like, wait, what? We're already there. You you just met. <laughs> yeah, but also Stephen Pasquale versus like Hunter Foster. I don't know. I can't see Stephen's Pasquale without just thinking Laura Benanti's ex husband. <laughs> yeah, I think about the Good Wife, so. We all have our Steven moments. I, I remember Laura Benanti during the Tony season was asked to describe the show in like one sentence. And she said, watching my ex-husband make out with Kelly O'Hara. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you, you probably didn't go see that. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I really don't like falling into you. I don't like a lot of Robert's songs because as nice of a voice that Stephen Pasquale has, um, I really think it gets a little monotonous. The stoic loner vocal choice that Jason R. Bound has here feels a little like it could be really replaced with temporarily lost in this vocal clarity. And I'm like, oh, that's the same. I, I feel the same here. Mm -hmm. I, Whereas, yeah, I, there is a lot. He gets a lot of time. Yes. On the soundtrack. Yes. <laughs> for sure. Like almost too much, which I feel like might just be from the mind of Jason Robert Brown. Like, I think he just understands that point of view better, maybe. He's just not that interesting of a character. Right. Like, it's not really an arc for him at all. Like, he just kind of has, like, the stakes for him are very low. Yes. Extremely He's, low. Yeah. So I'm just <laughs> kind of, like, less interested in what he has to say about, like, his state of mind. Um, so I kind of wish that more time was spent with Francesca on this one. Like, really, in, in when his point of view would have been the most interesting, which is when he was waiting for her to call or whatever, mm -hmm. they never even give him a song for that. No. <laughs> right. Like, that that's the only time where he'd be like, man, I lost something. And <laughs> nothing. No song there. <laughs> Open up. 
can we talk about another life briefly negatively mostly <laughs> yeah i don't love that song no offense jrb i love you i'm sorry <laughs> i think that this song is out of place and jason robert brown just wanted to characterize robert a little too much because that was the only point of view he understood here and trying to the, the bitchy ex-wife kind of motif which Jason Robert Brown just loves to play with. I mean, he loves writing about adultery and horrible exes. Like, you write what you know, I guess. That's his favorite thing. Those are his two favorite things. I feel mm -hmm. like he is probably the horrible ex in, in every relationship he's been in, but he doesn't see it. <laughs> he's the kind of guy where if you found out he was the serial killer Ted Bundy style, you'd be like, yeah, we all knew it. Oh, I God. guess so, yeah. That's fair. <laughs> this... Yeah, it was a very, like, weird way to give Robert, like, I don't know. I think it's kind of used to make, to take him seriously. Like, he's not just this guy who, like, you know, goes around the world and, like, has sex with whoever he wants. Like, he has feelings. <laughs> he has feelings. And he has been in relationships. And he's hurt. Oh, my God. So oh my it's, God. He's wounded. He's how, right. how will he survive? He's She's going to sing this puppy. Joni Mitchell song about how... how it does sound a lot like Joni Mitchell, that song, right? It's not just me that's, like, putting those connections together. No, it totally does, and the way that they kind of costume her. It's, like, very yes. inspired by Joni. Today, but who we are and who we want to be. So let's talk about who we are and who we want to be um, by Francesca and company. I, and Robert. And Robert? Oh, yeah, he yeah, is he kinda is, that really his, is that his big number? It's not his big number, but he kind of opens it. It's a, it's a very lovely um, song, I think. Mm -hmm. See, I, I don't even remember it. Like, it's, it's among the one? album. It's probably the one I listen to the least now that I'm looking at it. Like, even uh, I kind of listen to when you're when I'm gone and um wondering a more hmm. like I i'm gonna let you go because you obviously have some thoughts here no i mean i don't really have like a strong opinion on it either way i just kind of like the, um... <laughs> just kind of like it no just i, I like, like it. it i think like i um so what i tend to do is i make playlists of albums that just like don't even have the songs that i never listen to in them you know so it's like, I don't even remember most of the, like, family songs. <laughs> so <laughs> I just, like, have whittled it down to basically Robert and Francesca. And I, I like this one. You know, it's a nice little um, guitar opening for me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have anything to say on this one. So um, Yeah, that's fair. Let's just go to the big ones. Go to the heavy hitters before and after you. One second in a million miles. Let's go, guys. This is the iconic one. Like, sure, Falling Into You is the big one, but this is the one that's meant. This is what the show is, and this is the emotions we want you to feel. This is when the show gets good. Three songs away from the end, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's when it gets good. <laughs> Man, yeah. It's a good she song. She has to make her big mm -hmm. voice. Yes. And my question to my two wonderful co-hosts today, would you have stayed with Robert or, or went off with Robert or stayed with Bud with your... Horrible children. 
from everything we see about Bud and the two children, I I would have left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna agree. I'd have left. <laughs> I, I don't like know. The first I... thing that happens when when Bud comes back is he's just like horrible immediately. It's just like okay, <laughs> yeah, where's my dinner? Is a... I'm gonna go beat our kid. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Why aren't you smiling? Yeah, it's like all right. No, I should have left. This is this is lame. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't think I could just like live on a farm. I think is the big one. I, yeah, me. I mean I, I'm too cosmopolitan for that. Like I just imagine Francesca's entire house must smell terrible. I mean, I would agree, but I live on a farm, so I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, Isabel, have you ever, like, lived extended periods of time on, on, like, a farm or anything like that? Um, well, I grew up in Ohio, and my, like, family has a farm. <laughs> so, oh, so you um, live this life. <laughs> I haven't, this like, lived about, this, this life. Like, I would you. spend some time during the summer there, mm -hmm. you know? But, like, um... I liked it as like a refuge, but I would never choose to live there, you know? Yeah, it's one of those moments where I'm like, I love animals, but also I hate cleaning up after them and I hate the smell of them and I hate everything about this life. Oh, Farmers, right. like my cousins far did 4 H, but I would ne I was never jealous of that. <laughs> Ever. Far farmers go out into their yard and they spread cow shit everywhere on purpose. <laughs> like that's that's the farmer life, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you were Ohio. You're we, we were state buddies for a while. Oh really? Yeah, Michigan. Oh okay, very okay. nice. Uh, our people hate each other, so by <laughs> law we, we 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 are now enemies. I know. It sucks. Excellent. Yeah. Nice knowing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Knowing you. I feel like the rift has begun, and now we can never be friends. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. So when are we talking about the neighbor's big number? <laughs> or oh, not? Right. I feel like nothing needs to be said about that number. She has a great voice, though. The only number involving people that aren't Fran or Robert that I like is when I'm gone. Isn't that when they die? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. I like Bud feeling bad about it, and I kind of like this characterization of Bud. Like, wouldn't it be, have been great if he was just this faceless person throughout the entire story? Then when he shows up, this is the number he goes out on, like, having this really reflective, like, oh, this person that we kind of villainize and we're rooting against this entire time has this conscious and this thoughts and all these feelings. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, right, maybe I shouldn't, maybe you shouldn't cheat on people. This is a real person, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's not adultery if you're beautiful. Well, let's be fair. That's true. That's fair. It, yeah. That is fair. <laughs> Clint Eastwood taught me that. <laughs> Clint Eastwood taught us that, and it's brilliant. Um, but that's my biggest complaint about this song. I think the song is great, but I feel like it would have been better if they framed it more like they had in the movie, where this guy was just there at the beginning, left, and then we don't see him again until the end, and he's like, yeah, I knew you cheated, but I love you anyway. Right, yeah, just make him disappear. He doesn't... I mean, now that I'm, th I'm thinking about this as, like, a practical issue, I'm wondering if, like, there's some kind of concern in terms of, like, selling a musical that's just two people on stage for a really long time. Like, I don't know if there's concern of just, like, the the whether or not an actor can actually do that like just with their voices like getting enough rest for that or you know pitching it as just like there's no company <laughs> at all you know um i don't know i don't know if that'd be harder well, i mean there are it comes shows to the point where why even do it if you can't do it <laughs> right I mean, there are shows that do it, like Daddy Long Legs, Paul Gordon's musical, where they just have breaks where there is no songs and it's mostly dialogue and monologues and all that. And I feel like this has very similar breaks. You just need to cut this show down to less than two hours. We need it to yeah. be like a good hour and 40 at most. Oh, yeah. If it were just an hour and a half, like straight through, I think it'd be super solid. Mm -hmm. I think this would have been one of Jason Robert Brown's best. Um, but sadly, parades still exist. And right now, the show isn't great. Yeah, yeah, agreed. There's one thing that remains forever true. Past the thinking, past the breathing, past the beating of my heart, it will all fade away. But you, it all.
finally, let's talk about It All Fades Away, which is Robert's big, I'm, I'm gonna die, but I love, so life is good, I guess. <laughs> Everyone dies. The neighbors die, the Robert dies, Bud dies, like Hamlet. Or was, <laughs> was this also... <laughs> No, this wasn't the same year as Hamilton, was it? What was that, Isabel? You no, broke up for a second. I was, uh... Oh, no, she froze. Are oh, sorry. Did I freeze? Nope. Yeah, you froze for a bit. I asked a question back, that I uh, ended up answering for myself, so it's all good. Oh, my we gosh. Miss anything. I, I will find out in editing and then be... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that was what the question was. Yeah. Very interesting. It was a dumb question, so... Uh, I'm very curious now, like, current me wants to know, what was the question? I was wondering if this was the same year as Hamilton, and then I realized it definitely was not. This wasn't even a good year for musicals. Like, I think what won was, like, Beautiful, the Carole King musical, and... I'm, well, I'm very convinced that Kelly didn't win because this show did so bad. Like, I don't think anyone saw it. Yeah. And they also didn't let her perform at the Tonys, which was dumb. This entire year feels like, because it was, like, 2014, I remember watching it and being like, oh, they didn't show Jason Robert Brown winning his award either. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Jason Robert Brown is convinced that the Tony committee has, like, a vendetta against him because they didn't nominate him for anything for 13, which I think it's just because it's 13, but whether or not. Yeah. But, oh, no, this is the year of Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder, which I don't think is aged that well, but was fun. I really liked that musical. It was fun. Mm Mm-hmm. It was also the year of Rocky the musical, if anyone wants to remember that. Wow. Rocky the musical. Isn't that the, the movie about the guy that can't talk? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but <laughs> yeah, we all fade away into nothingness and then we die and Jason Robert Brown composes musicals about us. That's, that's where life leads for everyone. Death yep. and a Jason Robert Brown musical. Piano yeah, at, least solo. A, at least you get a good song at the end of it, you know? Yeah, you get one or two good songs, and three hours later, you're like, oh, that's over. (laughs) Yeah. Um, All right, so we're hitting that moment where we're getting close to 50 minutes, so what are our overall thoughts on Bridges of Madison County and our cheese rating? Isabel, do you know anything about our cheese ratings? I don't, so I'd love to make Andrew go first, then, and you'll get an idea. (laughs) All right, Andrew, what is your overall thoughts and your cheese rating? okay. The music is really good, so I'd probably just listen to the music, like listen to the album, and probably skip any of the songs without the the two leads. Um, but if you actually watch it, there's a lot of parts where it's just not great because they just cut away from what you're actually interested in all the time. Um, everything with the neighbors could be cut. Pretty much everything with the kids could be cut. Um, but there's there's like a good show buried in there somewhere. Um, and I guess as far as a <laughs> As far as the cheese rating, I'll give it uh, Parmesan. <laughs> Perfect. Literally no no rubric aside from the fact, what's a cheese that you feel like would fit this musical? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right, Isabel, your turn. No, I mean, I pretty much agree with that entire assessment. Um, <laughs> I love the music. I think Kelly O'Hara is incredible. If you can't tell, I keep just like raving about her. I think she's amazing. Um, I'm very happy that someone wrote a role for a soprano. Like those seem to be disappearing. And so um, that was just a huge relief to see that that existed in 2014 with a new musical, not a revival. Not just not just a revival. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So but, you know, obvious problems. If I were to call it a cheese i would call it swiss cheese because um it suggests that it's european but it's super american (laughs) and also um has a lot of like holes in it (laughs) i knew it was coming (laughs) i mean it's you you give it swiss you gotta mention the holes (laughs) yeah you do (laughs) just things should not exist in it is what i mean yeah. Honestly, there should be holes in it. It's like Swiss if they didn't put the holes in it. It's like, let's stop, just stop fill these holes my, in with stop stuff. Stop ruining my answer. Hold on. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Yeah. Um, so I I agree with both of you guys. Basically, this is the first time we've had a guest on where all three of us are kind of in agreement with how we feel, <laughs> where we feel like the highs are very high, but the lows are just so low that it kind of ruins the overall experience. Yeah. Um. So I'm giving this like a giant like wheel of cheese as made by Iowa Farms. Um, Ooh. Where you just have too much fit and you can't handle. It. You gotta Guess chop away so at that specific. thing <laughs> before you guys can get anything worth eating. Like a like a string cheese that needs to be taken down a little. Yes. 
peel some like things a away. Like that's covered in wax, and you got to get the wax off of it <laughs> yes. before it's good. Perfect. Mm. That is exactly it. All right. So, Isabel, I love your content. Be Kind Rewind is like one of my favorite YouTube channels in the Thank entire you. world. Um, so I'm just going to let you shill it. Like, tell us where we can find it and tell us like a video you think our, my audience would love. Ooh. Okay. Um. So I am on YouTube. If you just look up Be Kind Rewind. Um, and I talk a lot about Hollywood history and... I use kind of the best actress Oscar as like a lens to talk about different women throughout Hollywood history and stuff like that. And if you're really into musicals, then there are two episodes that I think you might enjoy. One is how uh, Julie Andrews won her Oscar. Talk a lot about My Fair Lady and and, uh, Mary Poppins in that one. And um, also I talk about uh, in my 1969 episode, I believe how um barbara streisand won for funny girl so if you're interested in those musicals and those actresses check it out mm-hmm. she also does this wonderful comparison between judy and judy garland's performances and how that's represented and i also personally want to recommend that one because i love that one a lot too oh yeah yeah I, <laughs> judy garland's my fave or one of them at least mm-hmm and, but if you want to go for, like, the really high-viewing ones, go. she does a comparison of all the stars born movies and all that. So that's that, if you love Lady Gaga, go for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right, let's go on to the scripted sh- spiel we got here. Thank you guys for watching. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, at Musicals with Cheese. Our Twitter is at Cheesy Musicals. Our Patreon is Musicals with Cheese. Our Instagram is Musicals with Cheese. Our YouTube page is also Musicals with Cheese. But our email is musicaltheaterlives at gmail.com. Combo Branker. Um, our title card was created by the amazing Jolene Casco. Please give her some love over on her Instagram, at Jolene Casco. All right, Andrew, Isabel, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this on up? Just thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome anytime. We had a lot of fun today. Thanks for, be- thanks for coming on. Yeah, it was great. All right, guys, we'll see you next time on Musicals with Cheese. <laughs>